This is Dr. Lance Davis, Medical Director of the Roper Hyperbaric and Undersea Medicine Department. Now we're going to start Dive Medicine Module 2. And this is going to focus on problems that can happen in association with diving that do not require hyperbaric oxygen therapy, both emergent and non-emergent conditions. In the previous module, we were talking about problems that might uh, require hyperbaric oxygen treatment, but there are many things that happen underwater that can affect a diver negatively that simply don't require treatment. Uh, let's start with the emergent conditions. There are several things I like to have the divers aware of, things you might have heard of in your dive training and it didn't really sink in, things just to think about and know how to respond appropriately and also have a better understanding of how those might be handled in an emergency department or hospital setting. So let's start with the condition of pneumothorax. Most divers I talk to have heard of this pneumothorax. Pneumo means air, thorax means chest, and together that means air in the chest in an inappropriate place. So what that really means is uh, you've punched a hole in the lung in one form or another and air has escaped from the inside of the lung to the outside of the lung, but the inside of the chest. If that air continues to build up with each time you take a breath, we call that a tension or expanding pneumothorax. So this can happen to divers who may forget to exhale properly on the way up, who may panic and bolt to the surface, or divers who may have had pre-existing lung disease, which we don't know about, which weakens the lung. And this is really uh, part of that pulmonary overinflation syndrome that we mentioned when we talked about arterial gas embolism a while back. So let's say you're coming up and the volume of air in your lung is expanding and you're not exhaling properly. Pressure is building up and may find the path of least resistance and that's going to go put pressure on the lining of the lung. Now if it shears the lining but not completely through, that's where you may get bubbles that go into the lining of the lung and into the circulation. If it pushes all the way through and punches a hole, that's where you can get a pneumothorax. So uh, this would cause chest pain, shortness of breath, difficulty breathing, unconsciousness, and in some cases can be fatal. The good news is for diving, usually if this happens, it creates a very small hole and doesn't continue to leak air into the chest cavity and therefore is usually symptomatic but not as dangerous as say it happened due to a puncture wound or a car wreck or something where you had massive trauma. So that's pneumothorax and an isolated pneumothorax is definitely not something you should put into the chamber. If you think about it, you don't want to put more compressed air into a lung which is already popped and is leaking air into the chest cavity. This is something that's seen in the emergency room. Uh, oxygen is the field treatment for it. Uh, when you get to the emergency room, that would quickly take a chest x-ray because you're having shortness of breath. And a pneumothorax or pocket of air would be seen out here on the outside part of the chest. And a chest tube. Presley Howlett, 2055. Dr. Presley Howlett, 2055. and a chest tube would probably be placed by a surgeon. This would allow that pocket of air to be drained to the outside and would keep the lung inflated while healing of the lung lining occurred and then eventually the chest tube would be removed. So this is not something to put into the hyperbaric chamber. A similar condition is called pneumomediastinum and that simply means air but now in the midline structures rather than the lateral or outside structures of the chest. So same problem, you had a pulmonary overinflation and a small hole pushed through in the lung, but now that air is tracking up these midline structures of the chest, your esophagus, your trachea. Uh, it can cause chest pain, a feeling of profound indigestion, or even uh, be confused with coronary heart attack pain. Uh, it's a very scary feeling. The good news is that pneumomediastinum is rarely dangerous. It's usually just symptomatic. That extra air just tends to track up here. It may even lodge up here in the skin and give you a crepitous feeling or like that packing material with the bubbles. It's just crunchy. But the air tends to track up here and not collapse a lung, 
therefore it's symptomatic, but it's not really as dangerous. I get several calls a year from emergency rooms where the doctor uh, has a diver with some chest pain, they've worked them up for a cardiac problem, other things, and they can't really figure out what's going on, want to know if I should put the diver in the chamber. Well, the answer is usually no, and I'll say, hey, take a close look at that chest x-ray or do a CT scan of the chest and have the radiologist look at it with you, and often they will find air tracking up along these structures in the chest, causing the diver significant pain, but the treatment for that is almost always just observation. The body will absorb that air, uh, it'll go to the right place eventually, the pain will go down, and the diver should be fine. So that's another condition that is concerning and will end up in the emergency room and is associated with diving but should not be treated with the hyperbaric chamber. Now for any time you're underwater and you come up and you're having problems, again remember your basic CPR, remember uh, that the first treatment for anything to do with diving when in doubt is oxygen because even if you have a, a collapsing lung you want to oxygenate your blood as much as possible. Holly with uh, dietary 6780 Holly with dietary 6780. And if the diver, the patient, uh, cannot breathe on their own or goes unconscious and needs it, then initiating CPR is important. Hopefully, uh, all divers are trained in CPR before they go out on any dive, or at least someone on the boat is proficient in CPR so that they can render that, that first aid. So that's pneumomediastinum and pneumothorax. Let's talk about another problem that can occur, which is near drowning. So you've heard the phrase, you can drown in a teaspoon of water, right? Well, that's, that's true. Oftentimes, drowning is really just laryngospasm. Your larynx can spasm when you inhale water over it rather than swallowing properly. So if you had a, a bad luck with your regulator or your regulator fell out and you took a, a breath of water, your larynx can go into spasm and block you from being able to breathe. Even if your lungs aren't full of water, uh, then by the time you get to the surface, if someone assists you, uh, you may have gone unconscious because you aren't able to breathe. So that's, that's a form of near drowning. Some things to remember about drowning or near drowning. If the person's unconscious and not breathing on their own, initiate CPR and rescue breathing, oxygen. A lot of times at the scene this will allow the person to wake up and they'll be okay. Also remember uh, that cold water can preserve brain tissue and other tissues a long time even if the person appears to be dead or near dead. So you've probably heard the expression if you drown in cold water you're not you're not dead until pronounced that by an emergency department or a medical professional, and that's absolutely true. So if a diver came up and appeared to be lifeless, you couldn't feel a pulse, was not breathing, even if the diver was blue, and especially if the diver's in cold water, you should always continue efforts for a prolonged period of time and give that person the benefit of the doubt. Of course, we should probably do that anyway, unless it's just a ridiculously long situation away from any help. So uh, those are some things to think about diving. I've had divers with near drowning experiences. They came to the emergency room. We weren't sure if it was drowning or if it was an arterial gas embolism. Had them ready to go into the chamber to treat for a cerebral arterial gas embolism. And then the diver woke up and their neurological exam normalized. And so we actually didn't treat the patient. We just admitted to the hospital and watched and the diver was fine, thank goodness. So near drowning itself, just not breathing, asphyxiating, uh, is not a specific reason to put the patient in the chamber, but if we don't know exactly what happened, they probably would get treated in case it was a gas bubble in the brain. So those are three things that are emergent conditions that don't indicate hyperbaric oxygen chamber treatment. So I'll stop there, and the next part of this will move on to non-emergent things that can happen underwater that fall under the realm of undersea medicine that you should be aware of.